we started part three and we were establishing some light greens and um, it's a bit too green it's to have a bit more of the um, yellow when it's that green it's probably not looking I guess with the rest of the painting which doesn't have very bright colors but rather muted colors it just looks weird so I just uh, I hope you can see I just sort of I'm establishing a bit more bright colors in here and in fact uh, in my photo this lion is actually almost lost because it has the same kind of bright color as the background so I'm gonna try to see if I can make sure that I can distinguish that lion with the color palette instead of the tone that it has but anyway uh, let's continue doing this bright green there's another area of the bright green um, green and yellow where the light is hitting and as you can see I go in layers I don't like to establish the very bright uh, from the start and if if I do that then I it's really very hard to establish the rest of the painting Everything I think in, in life in general, but in painting for sure, it's relative. So the brighter it looks, it's it has to do with the surroundings. So as we are building the painting, we are seeing the darker first, and then we start establishing these lights. So <clears throat> the areas that we're getting more bright sunlight it's coming from here and as you can see I have uh, in my brush uh, different areas some of them have the yellow some of them have the green so I don't really know where the paint is going to be deposited where it's going to be the green where it's going to be the yellow uh, but that's sort of the idea is that it goes this way um, so that it doesn't look all the same and it does give a better impression. There's an area of, of light hitting on the top of that planter. These were uh, planters with uh, no flowers, but we can consider putting flowers in there. It's, it's really our painting, so it's, it's the way we want to, to depict it. And I like to keep the shadow area not very well defined. Um, some, some spaces here we're getting uh, more light and then there's uh, more light coming in in some of these areas that these are the trees that would be producing the shades in there. Okay, so, so far it is sort of looking already the way that I was intending to paint. Um, so some of these are not very well defined, but hopefully will give the idea that there was, it's a nice wooded area in there. Now, this is a bit too dark. Acrylic paints dry dark and I am painting on an already dark surface. So it's okay because we're building layers. If you remember, if you go back, I think this was in part two where I did this column, it looked very bright. In part one, when I painted this, it looked really awful. It looked like I was putting yellow and it looked really bad. But as you can see, the paint starts to get sort of closer together and there's a visual blending. Even though we have orange and purple, side by side, our eyes are looking at the combination of those two colors. And this is, in general, this particular painting has a lot of secondary colors. You can see orange, purple, and green. And that's a very nice scheme of painting. Again, clean your brush. I don't want to bother you and bore you with all of these paint you know, steps, but I think it is important for you if you are following me or if you intend to do something similar, and I'm now washing it in water, 
I don't want to move the camera. It took me two hours to set up the camera angle in the right way. So I hope it's working. Uh, okay, so we are going to make this a, lit, a little bit lighter. And the other thing is this should be the same width as this one. It is in perspective, so it could be smaller, but not as small. And also this particular area is coming a little bit longer and this one here I have it shorter. So I still have uh, some of my paint, uh, the salmon -y color. This is probably gonna be too bright, but we can try that. And uh, so this is gonna have to go a little, yeah, it is a bit light, but it doesn't matter because it's still, you know, very light wash. The advantage of the Masterson palette that I am using, and I, I recommend it in, in in the uh, description below is that my paints are still nice and workable. It's called open acrylics. I added a bit of the blue and a little bit more of the alizarin crimson to make it a bit darker here because this is getting the shade. Um, it is going to be covered anyway with a little bit of ivy so i don't worry too much about the details but you can see you know you just add some of these uh, brush strokes and it gives a nice element so this column now becomes a bit more logical in the eye to the eye um, for reading that this dental comes like this and I actually need to establish a bit of the darker color, as you can see, uh, not mixed very well. But this, um, this is in the shaded area. All right. And probably we will have to make this a bit darker. Yeah, I think you know, when you are looking at your painting, and I am looking at it um, from an angle, you are looking at it straight forward, but I'm looking at it from an angle. So sometimes it's difficult to judge if I am going straight or not. And don't feel pushed to blend everything. Really, it doesn't do the painting any good. It's better not to blend a lot. Uh, so now we have these two columns. Now this one looks wider than this one. So we actually are going to make this a bit uh, wider. I mean, we can make this wider or this one smaller. And I'm thinking that because this one looks pretty okay and I don't want to take too much longer with this painting. I've already bored you with three parts. I don't want to make this uh, forever. So maybe what we're going to do is make this one just slightly smaller just a, a, a smidge and not as small as it was. So sometimes it's just going back and forth, back and forth, as you are seeing right now. <laughs> You're probably saying, what is she doing? Why did she do that? <laughs> okay, I am just going to make it like this. And it does look like it's in the shadow because this whole area is shaded, all right? Uh, now, um, in this area, I think it is way too dark. Acrylic paints, I think I've mentioned this before, uh, dry, dark, and um, everything that we had done here with some brush strokes. I mean, it should be darker than this. For some, you know, this was getting a bit more of reflected light from the garden. The gardens are, we are in the garden going towards the palace. And uh, so the garden area was really nice in terms of very sunny. It was getting the, the sunlight hitting directly. And what I'm trying to do is just to make sure this is dark, but not as dark as it was um, because it, it was a bit lost. Sometimes it's not bad to have areas where it's lost. I just moved the panel. I hope it's still <clears throat> in the right frame. And I hope I'm not moving this painting or the camera too much. Uh, I am trying to paint 
So here, we don't need to define this too much, but it's always nice to have some of the areas looking through. So this is some, I'm just painting some, some holes in this tree, right? So, uh, you know, it was a bushy tree, but there's still some holes and the holes allow you to see the, the back. Well, I think this area doesn't need to be explained in the, in the painting too much. Um, it doesn't really matter. I think the focal area is this one, and then this one needs a, a lot of work still. So it should be a little lighter in this area coming down, and as you go down is darker so i still have the dark bluish but i don't want to put this bluish color in here so what i'm going to do is to mix a bit of this salmon color that i have i think it's going to go well with that blue and uh, just it's a, it's a very light gray i mean it's like a purple color and I hope I'm not going to mess up too much, but it's, it's just making sure that the top should not be as dark as the bottom. And now I am going to clean the brush from this color so that I can not blend, but make it sort of disappear on this end. And brush a bit, you know, below. So it is there's more light in the top than there is as we approach the bottom of the stairs. Now on the other side is not the salmony gray color, but it's more the, the yellow color because it was getting the light. And I don't want to use the cadmium yellow for that, but again, my transparent Indian yellow works well uh, to, to brush it and to not completely mix with violet. Violet and, and yellow make a, a dull gray and sometimes dolls are actually what we need. Uh, but in this case, I want to make sure that it looks like it's brighter in the top. It's transparent, so it may actually start getting less and less color in there. Um, there was some brighter areas on this uh, and I have the salmony color that I had mixed in the previous two parts with a little bit of the Indian yellow. And I just want to make sure that it's on the edge of the brush so I can, and I'm using the other side so it's not, oops, it is too much. <laughs> I just wanted to do like a soft uh, area here, but this happens and don't worry, it's actually, like I've said sometimes, it's actually not that bad that you see what I'm doing and how, if I get to fix it, how, how I'm fixing it. I'm lightening a bit of this area here and this area here. It's actually the same brightness, but by having yellow, uh, it makes this warmer, sort of the sunlight yellow and red make it look a uh, nicer sort of warmer color and violets and blues make it look less sunny color and now uh, with almost no paint in the brush i am just going to sort of distribute this a bit and again in the paint in the photo i had um, my sister said, why don't you put the photo? I'm like, are you crazy? They're going to see how bad the painting is. So I don't want you to see the actual photo. <laughs> but uh, in the photo that I have, uh, there's more light in this area. And that's what I'm getting. The, the gist of what looked uh, lighter. And, and just, you know, brush it with no specific uh, shape in mind. And it just gives the impression of this arch and and the stone work or whatever material i mean you, you just 
find out it's any material. I'm going to use a little bit of the dark here. Um, just, just a bit. Um, I probably did not need that much. But there's one area that I realize I need to use my darkest dark and I'm still using the same brush because it doesn't really have that much of the salmon or white color. So that alizarin crimson with ultramarine blue, my darkest dark, and I think it was a bit dry. Okay, my darkest dark. And again, I'm just going to reestablish this line here that when I was painting, increasing this size, I think I just worked on that. And that's why I like painting landscapes with no architecture, because if you change the shape of a tree, well, it doesn't really matter, it's still a tree, but if you change one of these angles, it just doesn't read correctly. This wall has a, a it's bent, so there's like the face of the wall and then the other wall goes like that. So I think it's reading correctly. This wall is going this way. And well, I don't need to define that. I already said I need to tackle these two areas. So this became a bit brighter now, which looks okay, because the light was coming from here and it was definitely the lightest part. All right. Clean the brush, get all of that out. Then I'm dunking it in clean water. And so there's still a little, maybe, yeah, a little bit of the dark, but it doesn't really matter when we are painting. Uh, sometimes having the brush with the colors that you used before creates a bit more harmony in colors. So I am going to use again the salmony color with the Indian yellow because uh, I realized that this here in the back it's actually uh, less defined and I had left the white seeing, uh, seeing through that area so I'm putting a bit of white. I had, I had left the red and I think it's uh, too red in that area. So in the back, actually, it was not very well defined what we were seeing. So now we're going to start trying to make the impression of these terracotta po pods or planters. And for that, I am using a lizard crimson with the mix, salmony mix, that I had and this is gonna go in the shaded area maybe it should be a little bluer why not so let's move on the pile that I had for the violet that I used here and just put it on top yeah I think that works better for the shaded area of the one in the top left or the, the the highest one was the brightest one and as we go down um, the other ones were getting a bit less of the light so they're going to be a bit darker um, but still sort of the violet so i am using the pile that i had of the violet that's a bit darker you can see this one is just slightly darker and then this planter. So there's the th three planters and I'm, you know, I keep telling you, we don't need to do a lot of details or explain all the details as long as at the end, it does look a little bit like a planter. Okay. Clean the brush. And we are going to dip into some of the greens that we had that were not very bright green. So I do have in my palette, if you have not um, saved, that is just a little bit of violet with your Viridian green and white. And so it's just establishing that this was the planter and there's 
there's a plant in here that's getting a lot of light. There's this plant here. So as you can see, it's a very muted color green. And I made the shadow or the shaded area of the plant the same color as the shaded area of the planter. I don't think it really matters for the sensation of the eye that there's the three planters. Now, this area here, it, it had a little bit of light and we haven't painted it yet. So maybe that's why you probably are confused on what am I painting? So uh, let's clean this. And because I am going to use now a lighter color, I'm gonna make sure that I clean this with water. And if I can get rid of most of the dark, oh, which I did, so I can use the same. I thought I had to change, but no, I don't need to change it. Okay, so we're gonna go to the light um, color that we had, a lot of the, it's a, the salmon -y color with a lot of white. And it has also some of the Indian yellow. So at, at the end is a light color. I hope you can see it. And I don't know if I'm making you more dizzy or if it's actually <laughs> nice for you to, to see all of these combinations. So now we have a surface here. And we have... that planter we have the other planter there and we have the last planter there and i will not define a lot on the top but then i will come back and define a bit more of uh, these they were like this was on a shelf of course they are sitting on shelves right they are planters and there was this shadow coming in so I need to make sure I include that shadowy area that was projecting a bit of shadow from here. As you can see, it's still uh, transparent. So we are going to reestablish a, a lighter color on this side of the planter, on each one of them. And now, we are going to clean this just a bit doesn't need to be too much and we are going to use these salmon -y colors this uh, pinkish color that had a little bit of the purple it's not a very bright color so let's hope it doesn't look too bright and it doesn't so that works fine we have a ledge here, we have a ledge here, and we have a little ledge here. And then what we have on this side is sort of, they, they were like every other step, these planters. And these are not steps for walking, these are the steps for walking, but that's the way they had it. Um, built and so we would need to have a vertical a vertical and then vertical and then vertical and then here it just gets lost with the light the definition gets a bit lost okay and there was another one here okay so because now I can see it I hope you can see it it's very light but it's the idea that gives the impression. Now, the vertical area should be a little bit shaded. So I am going to use that sort of violet color mixed with this very light um, mixture that I was using. It's just a little, little, little bit of the violet that we have so that it's not very dark because it's getting the light. And this is going down and down and down 
and down and down. Now, this same sort of violet color, but with less of the salmon color is gonna be for the projection. I mean, it looks very blue, but it is violet. And it's gonna be for the projection of these shadows here. These are shadowy areas that are being projected on, on this wall. Again, it's coming from some of the trees that are on this area. And I think we should make this a bit uh, darker. So I, it's very convenient to keep, uh, make enough paint uh, mixtures because that's what takes longer. So some people actually like to have the, you know, 64 colors and you just choose the color that you need. I, I prefer to mix them as, as I am using them uh, because I don't know exactly what I am going to be needing at some point and I like to make the mixes. Also, staying with uh, what we call a limited palette helps your painting have more harmony in colors. Okay, so the vertical has to be a bit darker and here I just, uh, okay. This angle was, I think was a bit wrong. So I'm just trying to make uh, the shadow area here and we can reestablish some of the lights, but I hope it looks a bit more logical now, but we will be using some of the lights. I'm going to see if I need See how dark it became when I was painting it? I bet you thought it was very light. So because we have this, we can just, uh, again, put a bit more of this layer of lighter uh, color uh, so that we can uh, sort of shape the tree around. The tree should be darker than the back. Uh, but you know, acrylics dry, darker and I am painting on a dark surface. So that's why I have to reestablish the light colors. I had mentioned before that I wanted to put these light uh, areas of the lions in a light blue, but I am thinking I do like what I did here. I don't know how I thought about it. It's a lizard and crimson when I put it on top of the light and it somehow brings your eye to that area. It's kind of, kind of bright and same as here. Uh, maybe we can use some of this purple color that I have in the brush, just, just tiny, tiny pieces of it um, to shape it. But I think for the lions, I am thinking that I'm going to have some area, this lion's phase was in the dark so I need to make sure it's in the dark and I think this lion is okay except this is too dark so I'm going to probably paint with light uh, from the from the bushes in the back maybe cadmium yellow all right so because we are now daring to tackle lions again um, and I do hope that I don't bore you too much with all of these details. This was a very challenging painting. I think it's coming along nice. I hope it's giving the impression of all of the sunny day and sunny light that we had. We are going to use again the small Simply Simmons brush, which is a filbert brush. That means that it has like a round edge. So it's not it's not as straight, it's angled. And that helps me because it has a very, very nice chiseled edge. I think, I hope you can see it there. Okay, enough of, of painting details or details on the brush. Okay, so this is not white. 
this is this is the mixture of the white with the salmony color but it does look very very bright so let's see if this is gonna work well for the lion so the lion had the tail was sort of bent and then the back which was coming this way back is okay and then its mane was getting all the light or most of the light and this back end um, it probably looks too white and, and white is a boring color so what I'm going to do is just add a little bit of a lizarding crimson to that white even though that white was with the salmon color I think it does look too white so I am coming to the face of this lion and this is like miniature painting which I normally don't do I don't normally use 8 by 10 canvases but for these videos I've been using them because it's the best way that I can get you the best um, image. If I use a larger canvas, then either you see a smaller area or I have to put the camera way back and then my shoulder would be covering you. And I don't know, I mean, I probably, you don't mind about this. It's my choice to make these videos, but as the explanation it's I'm not used to painting small I am used to painting a bit bigger so um, I hope that um, this painting <laughs> I think it's gonna be the less popular of all because it's too long people usually like to see something that you can finish in one hour which um, which I rarely do, although I do have a couple of videos where I did finish a painting, but it was not as complex as this one. So I'm just adding a bit of that pinkish color to this area. All right. And the paw was resting, I think I did mention that, on that. So the face of this lion is in the shade, but I think I need to um, establish it a bit better. So clean your brushes, especially if you're going to stop using that brush for a while um, because the acrylics dry on, on the hairs of the brush and it just ruins the brushes. Oh, sorry. Sometimes I think that you can see it and I've been checking the videos and you don't always see what I'm doing and I think you see what I'm doing. Okay, so the purplish color with the salmon is going to, I think, give me a good shaded but not too dark area for the face of the lion, which I think it's right now too dark. All right. Okay, so now what we are going to do is two things. Around this one, dark areas to define it, and around this one, light areas to define it. And then there's one thing here I have not painted at all. And I know that I didn't paint this, but I like to see it in red. Maybe it should be purple, but it's my painting. I like it red. Uh, but here, I need to do something there. So I think that's going to be it. So hopefully, I don't miss what I have. And I finished the painting in this part three. <laughs> Let's hope we don't need to have a part four. Okay, so I'm going to start with the clear color. And honestly, I'm just going and daring to use cadmium yellow. 
it's very daring but I think that's gonna be what works the best to go around this fellow and that area of dark was way too dark in, in my opinion and as you can see um, I am painting sort of a light touch so the yellow it's mixing with the green underneath now as I mentioned before I think I did this should not have been that bright yellow technically it's farther in the back and uh, it should have been bluer and in the photo it's really hard to see where the line starts and where the greenery starts because they're almost fused in terms of how light they both wear so i am trying to pop up the image of that lion with this brighter color and as you can see it's just cadmium yellow but by the way that i use the brush strokes it's mixing with the rest so it doesn't look like you have super super bright lemony color in there and i think that lion is probably the best i can do and as i said uh, it, it looks like there's something on top of that arch that's fine i'm not going to dwell much more i think that looks okay there's some bright areas here that are going to be um, benefiting now what i'm going to do is a little bit of that cadmium yellow with the i don't know if you can see but i did add a little bit of white and a little bit of the indian yellow and I want to get a little bit of an accent on on this tree and it's not doing it okay no problem that wasn't um, a major area of focus in in the painting that's not it's not the tree and probably to pop those bright areas of the tree I would have to paint dark because that's what's gonna bring it okay um, cleaning the brush. I'm going to use now the dark to establish the shape of the other lion. And it's just uh, a lizard and crimson and ultramarine blue. I had already finished my dark pile, so I am making a new one. And same tiny brush that was cleaned and now um, let's put this lion again on a on a diet okay oh boy all oh, right I think that is better. Sometimes I have to actually take my glasses off because I don't see very well these tiny, tiny figures. Okay. Here. I had lost that definition before. Don't know why. So I am re-establishing some of that dark in there. There was some ivy here, but I don't think I will mess with that and this painting. It doesn't really need it. I think the impression of light is coming through uh, nicely and uh, it would be too much detail to start painting the ivy there. So I'm just trying to make sure that I clean my brush, as I always tell you that we should be cleaning the brushes. And now in the area behind, it's very similar to this, but lighter. So I am gonna use the same salmon color I had with 
with a bit of the purple. And I am not uh, going to mix it too much. I could have probably used the same before. It, it was just a little lighter. Um, I don't really know what was behind there. So what I'm gonna do is just, um, because it dries darker, just put a bit more light touches in here on the back of this place. This is way out, you know, in the, in the edge of the painting, so I don't want to attract too much visual attention to this wall. Um, so it's just making sure that I finish that. And then there are some light accents, not very light, but lighter accents should be on the top of the stairs. And I'm using the salmony color, sort of the pinkish color with white on the left end. And I am going to establish that also here. And then I am going to use more yellow, the two yellows that I had already with white. So because I already had them mixed, <clears throat> the cadmium and the alizarin, I'm sorry, and the Indian yellow. It's a very light color. And so that goes on the other end where the light is hitting those steps. And I'm making crooked steps and we can blame it on the centuries <laughs> of people going up and down. All right. Um, I think it's because I'm using the brush that doesn't have a very nice, um, it, some of the, you can see some of the hairs are actually not as good. This is probably my oldest brush, but that's okay. And I thought this needed a bit more of the bright uh, light coming in. You probably are saying, what is she doing? Well, I don't know. That's the answer. <laughs> I'm thinking that if somebody who really knows how to paint is watching me, he's probably going nuts saying, oh, she doesn't know how to paint. What is she doing? Okay. So now um, sort of a transparent, uh, transparent uh, sort of washy light color just to reestablish the light in there. I think it became a bit less light than I wanted. All of this was really getting hit by light and it's nicer to, to have it really with the impression of, of light. It would make more sense of what we are seeing. Okay, and now I just wiped some of this color. Okay. So now what I'm doing is that the brush doesn't really have much color. I'm just going, and this is the better brush. So I'm just going straight, as straight as I can, to, to make sure that that sort of light color we had um, follows correctly the the line because you know the surface is getting the light but what we are seeing below it's not so now what I'm going to do it's bothering me that this is probably too too light so I'm going back to my salmony color and just Oh, these work nice. Just establishing this straight, more straight going down. And as we go down, it gets darker than it is above. 
I think that should be okay. That it doesn't have to be uh, perfect, but it just gives the impression of the stairs. And um, this area here probably needs a bit more uh, light on on the planters, but to create that impression of light, it's always good to get some dark. And I told you that I probably had to do that. Let's hope that I don't mess about. So it's really dark, but I am adding a bit, a little bit of the color that I had with a mixture of the two yellows and white because I want to establish, like I mentioned, some shaded areas in this tree that will bring the the light areas of the tree uh, brighter. So it's, it's sort of a dirty color. And in the bottom of the tree, it's uh, usually darker. And I'm going to be using that too here for these plants for the left side of the plants that are in the shadow. And we are, I would say, uh, we are done, but perhaps just, um, I hope I don't mess up now, just with the yellows and the white. We are just going to make sure this is getting light. There were no flowers. I think I did mention that it was November and there were no flowers. I don't know if these normally have like geraniums or something like that. I am very bad at making things up. I need to see things to paint them. Um, so if it wasn't there, it's really hard for me to paint it. And I don't want to mess up putting some bright geraniums where I didn't see them. So you see what I'm doing is establishing some of these light color close to where I had put the dark. And I think it's, this just needs a little bit of, a, of an edge with the dark color and we are going to call it a day. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you watch other videos in my YouTube channel. I promise you this is the most boring one. Sorry about that. I never thought this was going to take me so long, but it was very challenging. I like the way it came out. I hope you like it too. And see you soon. Visit my YouTube channel. Have fun. Stay safe and paint. It's a very nice, relaxing way of pass, passing the time. This is the uh, Jardines de la Sultana in Granada, Spain.